Welcome to City Hope Church. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Hey, we are about to hear an incredible message. So why don't you pull out the City Hope app, pull up the message notes and follow along. Here we go. Do I have anyone here who loves the beach? Show of hands really quick. If you love going to the beach, you love it. It's like your favorite place. Yes, I am with you, beach people. Some people are not so much beach people, but I am a beach person. And just the other week, just a couple of weeks ago, we actually had our family holidays. Why? Because it's cheaper. Hello, I've got two children and I needed to go when it was in high season. I'm getting some nods, but not some laughter yet. Don't worry, you'll warm up. We'll get there. Church is fun to be in. So we went to the beach, and I had the best time, right? The girls had the best time. My family had the best time. Why? It was like eating, swimming, sleeping, repeating for, the, for a number of days. That was kind of all we did. From We parked the car, and we didn't move it, and we had a great time relaxing on our holidays. Isn't that kind of what holidays is all about? You know, we come down to that word holidays, and actually means to keep something holy, to make it special and unique, to allow yourself to be rest and relaxed and refreshed, ready for whatever's coming next. You know, we're coming into the holiday season, the holy day season, when the whole world is tricked into worshiping a Jesus that they don't really want to know. Isn't it great? And we have the inward run to let everyone know about this incredible story that is the gospel message at Christmas time. You see, Christmas is not so much about, sorry, it's going to be a little bit of a reminder today. It's not so much about the presents or the family time or the food or the time off. They're all things that are motivators. They are conduits towards a singular purpose because Christmas is all about Christ. Christ is the King of Christmas. If you are taking notes today, write that down. Christ is the King of Christmas. And just in case, maybe you had to be reminded today. Let me remind you of that. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. See, Christmas is all about this connection between God and mankind. It's highlighting again what Jesus did for you and I. It's it's asserting the authority of our King in heaven on earth again. Every 12 months, we wrap around to remembering again that Christ is the King of Christmas. But He didn't just come, but He is coming in again. What does Revelation tell us in 19, uh, verse 11 to 16? Didn't think you'd get Revelation in the Christmas series, but here we go. Then I saw heaven open, and a white horse was standing there. It's rider's name, Faithful and True. That's Jesus. For He judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself, and he wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. And the armies of heaven dressed in the finest and pure white linen followed him on white horses. Could you imagine the sight? Can you picture that in your mind right now? And from his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. Verse 16, here's the kicker. And on his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's, that is like a whole other version of glow up right there. Baby Jesus, conquering king in heaven, coming home to take his church. And we sit right in the middle to remember with the world Christmas, that Christ is the King of Christmas. You know, my ultimate encouragement from this message today, there's something that I really want every single one of us to get. And that is coming into Christmas, are you representing the kingdom that we are a part of? As a follower of Jesus, so maybe you aren't yet, are you representing the kingdom that you are a part of? Are you representing the king that has paid it all for us? Are we representing everything that we're supposed to as followers of Jesus, as Christians this Christmas? Because we are a part of another kingdom, a separate kingdom to what you see on this planet. We are a part of an eternal one, an everlasting one, and that kingdom is made up of a few things. So I actually just want to dive down on each of those few things to encourage you and speak to some people in the room who I know that are here. So if you're going to have a sovereign, a monarch, if you're going to have a kingdom, what are some of the things that we need to talk about? Well, the first for us, number one, if you're taking notes, is the king. Turn to someone and say, the king. Turn to the other person and say at the decibel that you're supposed to, the king. 
Wonderful. The king for us is Jesus. Jesus is our king. Hebrews 4, 14 and 16 says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he has faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. You see, we have a Jesus, a king that suffered worse than we could ever imagine. And you might have come in here today thinking, I don't know if anyone's felt or experienced the pain in my life that I've felt in my life. Maybe you've come in here feeling rejected or prosecuted or persecuted, dejected or ignored, painful or fearful or lonely, tempted or frustrated or angry. No matter how you've come into church today, you have a king in Jesus who has suffered every single thing that we could have ever faced as humanity and yet did not fall into missing the mark before God. So when we read again verse 16 of Hebrews 4, it says, So let us come, what, boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive His mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Come on, however you came in today, you need to be encouraged that there is grace in Jesus to cover whatever you think is the divide between you and Him. Whatever you think, oh, I don't know if I can really lean into following the King Jesus because of all this addiction in my past, all these other things that I've done before, or these attitudes I held before. I don't know if I can really step into, or, you know, that same version of Revelation, that is King Jesus in heaven. I don't know if I could walk up to Jesus on the white horse with the robe and everything, but you can because of what Jesus did for you and I. Not because of what you did for yourself. I'm sorry, friend, but there's nothing you can do for you to get you in the room with Him. It's everything He did for us, for you and for me. I'm the same just as you. But by grace, that His grace would be sufficient for us. Because if we're going to represent His kingdom, we have to understand what our King carries, because then we can carry it too. That's the first part. What's the next part of the kingdom? Well, the next part is actually something that is also in the word king. It's the word kin, K-I-N. Do I have anyone else loving the FIFA World Cup right now? Is there anyone who is enduring it? Put your hand up if you're enduring the World Cup. There is many people out there who are enduring the World Cup. There's many people who love the World Cup. Uh, I actually love the FIFA World Cup, not so much at the moment because Australia are terrible, but... um, we, we get there in the end, and we can talk about it later. But the fact of the matter is, what I love about the World Cup is I love seeing the nations represent themselves so well. I love seeing all the colors come out and the patronry. I love seeing the energy of the different nations come together. I love hearing the songs. I love hearing the horns going. I love hearing the drums. When you watch a game, you can't not be impacted by the people who are in the room. Why? Because they carry a certain kingship, Right? They connect together on a whole other way. But imagine this. Imagine if a team came out to play at the World Cup or whatever is your sport of choice, and on the back of their jersey, they all had the same name. It'd be a little strange, wouldn't it? Right? You'd be like, hang on, they can't all have the same name. They're not all part of one family. But we are as Christians. See, we're not just a subject. We're not just a servant to a king. Actually, God calls us something much more intimate and more closer than that. He calls us his kin, his family. The etymology, the, the word study of that word is found in every single, uh, when you go back, let me just show it to you. It's every single nation, every single uh, race is from Old English. It's sin, which is family, race, kind, sort, rank, and nature. The Old Saxon, it's Cooney and kin and kind and race and tribe. In Norse, High German, Danish, Swedish, Middle Dutch, Dutch, Gothic, Old Norse, German. Everyone kind of gets it. We're all talking about kin, but we're meaning something in a much deeper level than what we think as just, I'm a Christ follower. You're not part of a club. You are a child of God. Your family. That's what He calls you and I. See, any other kingdom, you would be a subject or a servant to the king. But in our kingdom, in God's kingdom, we actually are something much deeper than that. He calls us His kin, His family. Romans 8, 15 to 17. So... You have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Anyone feeling lonely? 
You don't need to in God's family. Verse 17, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we also must share in his suffering. Isn't that an incredible scripture? To tell you once again, hey, you just don't have a king that you can't access, but you have a king that you are called family to, that you're akin to him. Then what does he say about who we are as the church, as followers of Jesus in Matthew 16, 15 to 19? They're having this conversation between him and his disciples. And he says, then he asked him, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, a Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, this revelation of who Jesus really is as king, I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. So we as church are overcomers. Why? Because the same power that rose Christ from the dead is in us. Is this reminding anyone? You should be far more excited about the truth of what I'm talking to you about today than kind of what's happening in the room right in front of me. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. By His grace, we can come into His throne room. He calls us family and likens Him and pulls Him to Himself. This is the truth of who our King is. So shouldn't we then want to reflect, hey, we want to represent our King Jesus well, represent our kinship well with Him, being a part of the family. Well, then what does that look like when it comes to how, how does Jesus pray? Well, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is where we get to the kingdom part. So we've talked about the king, he's Jesus. We talked about the kin, which is us, his family, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now, what about the kingdom? Our job is to mirror God's kingdom on earth. The kingdom of God is a spiritual realm which, over which God reigns as king. You know, author H.G. Wells once wrote this, The doctrine of the kingdom of heaven, which was the main teaching of Jesus, is certainly one of the most revolutionary doctrines that ever stirred and changed human thought. It's out of this world. It's crazy to think that we are a part of something that is supernatural, invading in a place that is natural, because one day the supernatural will overtake the natural. You and I are kin to a king, and God wants us to release his kingdom on earth. So what scripture can I think to encourage you today? And we're going to read it together, and I want you to chew on it. I want you to think about it. I want you to get it into your heart, because the word of God is far more anointed than what I can ever say. So this comes from 2 Corinthians 5. It's 10 verses that I believe is going to change your Christmas if you let it get into your heart. It says, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, no, we, we are going, giving you a reason to be proud of us so that you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. But if it seems we're crazy, it's to bring glory to God. I think we get that in Pentecostal church. If it seems that we're crazy, it brings glory to God. If we're in our right minds, well, it's for your benefit because you catch the truth. Either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our own life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human perspective or point of view. At, at one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. That's my prayer today, how differently you will know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has actually become a new person. The old life has gone and the new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given to us the task of reconciling people to him. Oh no, this is where it costs us something. For God it was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. He gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ and we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Let me ask you this. Do you represent Jesus and his kingdom in the way you live your life? When people meet you, hang out with you, are around you, spend time with you, listen to you talk? Do they meet Jesus? Do they feel his kingdom? 
or do they not? You see, I love going on holidays to the beach. La, the other we went to the beach. Oh my goodness, I could have stayed there forever. And at any holiday you go to the beach, there's this conversation that takes part between any sound-minded people. We should move here. This should become our home. We could totally live. This would be amazing if we imagine if we could do this. But then the reality is, but if you live there, you wouldn't get to do the things you get to do on holidays when it becomes your home. My point and perspective is this. Sometimes with our faith and following Jesus, being a part of his kin and then doing the outworking of the kingdom, we can make this room feel like a holiday rather than our home. We can make this feel like, oh, I just need to be refreshed. I just need a touch from God. I just need to, to catch something in Him. I just need something, someone to pray for me. I just, need to, uh, I just need to do this or do that. We actually can make church following Jesus feel like a holiday rather than understanding we are ambassadors in Christ and this is the place we need to live out of. That this is our home. That our eventual home is heaven. Right through the death and life and resurrection of Jesus, we have the right to be connected with Him forever. So do I holiday <laughs> with Jesus or is He my home? Is He my safe place? And I could give you a bunch of really practical things about how to outwork this in your own world this Christmas, but essentially I boiled it down. If I could just get everyone to do one thing, if I could just ask the whole church, everyone listening today, everyone watching later on, everyone at Springfield this afternoon, if I could ask them to do one thing, what would be the one thing I could do, right? If, if, if the king and the kin and the, and the kingdom is a part of who I am, what's the one thing to make this really real for you? It's for you to be inclusive, not just invite. Invite is actually easy. I could Instagram invite almost a thousand people today. <laughs> Come to this. Inclusion is a lot harder. Inclusion says, hey, I'm coming along to this. Do you want to come with me? Inclusion says, hey, we're packing hampers next Sunday. Would you like to come pack with me and come to church? Inclusion says, hey, we're going to look at lights for Christmas. Do you want to go walk together? Inclusion says, hey, would you come and be a part of my world, this kingdom, and would you come close to see the king and the kinship and the kingdom about what Christmas is really about? We don't put these presentations on for kicks and giggles. We have far better things to do, right? We put it on so people can meet their maker, so they can have an encounter with a Jesus who loves them more than, than we could ever know. And I think sometimes we've got to come into church on Sunday or gather together and have a good halftime moment for me to breathe life in you. Here we go, everyone. Here's the water. Here's the oranges. Let's go. December's here. It's time for us to be inclusive. It's time for us to go beyond ourselves. It's time for us to think about that person who's lonely, lost, hurt, or broken in our world. Someone who is disconnected or disenchanted or far away. Let's stop being afraid of the position that they are and realize that we have a conqueror, Jesus, on the inside of us, that they need a touch of life in their life. And so what I would love to encourage you today, who is that one person you could include? Our calendar is packed. We have a bunch of stuff. Packing hampers, Christmas presentation, Christmas Eve service, anointing service. Who is that one person who needs to be invited to anointing service? Anointing service is when we pray the vision of next year over every single person, every single family member in our church. Can I tell you, people don't find that as weird as what we tell ourselves they do. We sub ourselves out. It's like, God, don't send me in. That's so bizarre. No, but you walk down the street at your local shopping center, there'll be people reading palm cards, right? There'll be people checking their star sign, or what, what hap what, what's going to happen to me this week? There's, there's different things. We don't think they're awake to it, but they are awake to it more than we could ever think or understand. And it is time for us to understand, that, hey, we're a part of a different kingdom. More important than your popularity, or can I go there? More important than people maybe rejecting you and the fear of that that our assignment is a kingly assignment, that we are ambassadors of heaven. And our job is to take the love of God into every sphere and atmosphere that we're a part of. So would you include someone? Not just invite, would you come sit with me at presentation? Would you come over for a meal this Christmas? 
Will we do something together? Could we do something together? How good was that message? Hey, we would love to have you visit us at one of our locations. And if you would like to know more about them or about what we believe here at City Hope, you can visit us at cityhope.com.au. In the meantime, why don't you check out a worship song from our team or last week's message? See you next week.